This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Hey, Bill. Happy Tuesday. And what's going on? Hey, guys. Uh, I'm excited about some college baseball, I would guess. I would guess I am uh, right there with you. I think most of our listeners are, too, if not just a little cautious optimism and maybe a little nervousness uh, because Arkansas will be playing at home and, you know, the past couple weeks haven't been all that good. But, man, 11 teams out of the SEC getting in. And I guess with uh, what do you think about Florida's inclusion into the tournament this year? I didn't think. Now, guys, I don't, I'm not a historian like you are with college baseball or baseball in general, but I didn't think they'd get in. I was a little bit surprised. I mean, in, in hindsight, I guess I'm not. But going into the selection show, I didn't think they'd get in. It looked like they were comfortably in, too. Like they weren't even one of the first, yeah. uh, one of the last four teams right. in. So that, that that was the one team I, th- I think could get uh, could get out of the, could get left out as far as the SEC was concerned. But uh, yeah. nobody got left out out of the SEC. And right. looking, I mean, top three seeds are all SEC teams. Um you know, you, you know Tennessee well. I think you know Kentucky well. Um, yep. who, who do you look at as a favorite right now? You have the dreaded number one seed curse, but I would think Tennessee's the favorite. Mm-hmm. They've got a very fortunate uh, path to Omaha. I'm not saying that you just give it to them, but and they, they did set it up to where they may be playing Wake Forest with Chase Burns, who was, a, was the number one pitcher two years ago for Tennessee and last year left him at the end of the year he was ticked off because they demoted him to the bullpen so he's he's the ace at wake forest and he's probably the number two pitcher taken in the draft coming up so they match that if, if that one comes to fruition they're in the east carolina regional so they'd have to get out of there but i thought that was easy but no i think tennessee is clearly the uh, the favorite go, going in how important is the regular season, uh, Bill, as far as like when you're when you're looking at basketball teams and they get into the NCAA tournament, you're kind of like, hey, man, this team's won 18 in a row or this team's won 15 or their last 16. Arkansas hasn't really been that way. They, they, which they played really tough, tough opponents, uh, but, but kind of just been, you know, around 500 uh, their, their last 10 games. How important is that to, to just be able to reset and focus now on the regional? There's no, I think what you're pointing out, there's no Connecticut where you just know, right? You just, you, there's a guarantee they're going deep and probably going to win it. You can't do that with baseball. Just prove that. Mississippi State proved it a couple of years ago. It's very difficult. Sometimes the momentum picks up this week. Whatever you saw previously isn't what you really thought you were seeing, and the momentum changes starting Thursday, Friday, it, over the weekend. That happens all the time. That's why in baseball, baseball is clearly the sport where you can at least try and claim lots of different things can happen. You can't say that in football, in college football. You can't in college baseball. Tennessee a couple of years ago didn't even get to Omaha, and they were an overwhelming one seed. You just, it's tough, man. Bill, I think, um, I think we hit on some of this last week, but it was before the NCAA announced uh, the – settlement uh which you know was basically agreed upon by the power conferences and then forced on the other conferences um are are we going to get to a place because it seems now what it seems to me is that the leagues will gain more autonomy to decide maybe uh roster limits or maybe how much each school gets in terms of a of a salary pool um, so I think in that case, we talk about the difference in, in revenue for the P2, which are the Big Ten schools and the SEC schools, even comparing those yep. to ACC and Big 12. So we very well could be at a place then the SEC and Big 12 or the SEC and Big 10 have, have uh, larger payrolls. We can use that word, line item, a payroll for your players than the other leagues, and now we're really talking about a huge discrepancy in, we use the term resources so often to talk about, about uh, you know, facilities and fan bases and, and all of that. Determine this, it's just about money and money available to pay players. This could be a big separator between the Big Ten and SEC and everybody else. Yeah, the autonomy has already started, it, and, and it's been going on, but 
the most recent proof would be the new playoff money. We talked about guys. Big Ten and the SEC is going to get 58% of the $1.3 billion a year starting in 26. That's just the playoff money. That's not your league TV money. That's the postseason money. It means Vanderbilt gets uh, $23 million a year in playoff money for doing nothing. That's the autonomy has started. Now, your point is it's clear, it's defined, and it will continue, and that is true. It will probably get more severe. And what we don't know but we're approaching is what schools can afford to play this game, and then when do we start seeing schools cut sports? And uh, football would be the last, but sports are going to get cut here. I'm not saying in the SEC it's going to happen, but – it could happen in the ACC, and it could happen maybe in the Big 12. Yeah, that, w- that was a thing that I was going to bring up here and wonder about it. <clears throat> you know, we're still yep. tr- uh, kind of pretending that Division One is Division One, and it's this big monolith, and we know for sure. I mean, you have separators within Division One of uh, even the haves and the yep. have-nots. You know, for a place like the SEC, like the Big Ten, and, and maybe even the other two major leagues in, in college sports, there there's, seems like there'd be enough money to be able to pay the players and not have to cut too much. But there are a lot of Division I athletic departments that just can't afford this, that really flat out just can't afford it. Correct. And the truth, the sodium pentothal moment, what we like to say on the show, the stress test, however you want to describe it, we're within a year of the reality of whatever that is and there's going to be some pain hey i, I know i've heard you hear say this name before is the the llama leva guy that uh nico that, that's going to be tennessee yep. i just saw where his brother uh madden uh what what is is he pretty good he's a four star and he just committed to ucla ucla's quarterback last year i think he's at oregon now uh so that'd be interesting but how is his brother is is he is he a star as well Yes, different body type. He's more physically built. Nico's really long and lean. Basketball, All-American volleyball player, 6'6", 205, maybe 210, but he got there. He's probably 185. Madden is 6'4", 230. Different body type. A uh, very good player. Not the high end that Nico. Nico's high end is the first pick in the draft. That's what his high end is. Now, I can't guarantee you that, obviously, but that is what he, that's his ability level. The and last, Madden's not that. The last guy you warned us about that could be the first overall pick <laughs> was when Ty Richardson was doing the show with me, and you warned us about Trevor Lawrence. And it turned out he was exactly that. So <laughs> you got a good eye for yeah, these Trevor, things, Bill. Trevor, we, were, we got note of him when he was in ninth grade in Cartersville, Georgia. He actually was an East Tennessee kid. And then family moved to Cartersville, Georgia. And freshman year took over. And, yeah, yeah. Now, again, who knows, but Nico's played one game, basically, the Iowa Bowl game. Not a whole lot there. He played well, but, but, but we all know a bowl game doesn't necessarily define you. But that's – I'm just telling you what his top-end potential is, put it that way. Hey, Bill, Arnd, I think uh, the SEC meetings in Destin, I think they start – they might have started yep. today. I think it's this week. They, they um, started. What, yeah, what, yep. what, uh, what's the major points that you think are getting spoken about there? Last night, actually, Monday night, the commissioner, Greg Sankey, met with the media. And that's not always – that's not really a media event, meaning scheduled moments. What media has to do at the Sandest Hill is just – stand in the lobby like idiots and wait for something and sometimes you stand all day and nothing comes your way but that's that's kind of that event anyway thank you met with him and um i don't know that anything was said in particular they asked him about the rashada thing he said he didn't like uh, lawsuits and said he never had a student athlete come to him and say i want to be paid so i'm taxed like an employee things like that which makes basically no sense but I don't know, guys, if anything. The future of the league schedule right now, it's at eight games in intra-league. That's two more years. Does that get talked about a little bit? Probably. Things like that. And I would think also scholarship allocation because there's a lot of rumors that they're going to do away with walk-ons, which, which puts you at 85 total. 
with no walk-ons. And, and again, that's not official, but that is a heavy discussion that's going on right now. Things like that. Wow. Wow, that's kind of wild to yeah. think about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really is. That would do away with the Brandon Brolsworth Award and, you know, the, the story behind guys like that and, and, and a Baker Mayfield and a Grant Morgan. I mean, these are some of the – these are stories that, you know, regular, regular people just connect with. Hey, guys, if, if Charlie Condon were a football player, where would yeah. he be that's right. <laughs> with that rule? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.